Good day everyone, welcome to General Chemistry 1. This section is on the electronic structure of atoms, focusing on the quantum mechanical model of the atom. In this lesson, we will describe the quantum mechanical model of the atom. But before we proceed to the main topic, let us discuss first the nature of light. What is light? Light is an electromagnetic radiation or capital EMR. It is the energy emitted in the form of waves having an oscillating electric field component that is perpendicular to magnet field component. Being a wave, electromagnetic radiation possesses the following characteristics. First is the crease or peak. When we say crease or peaks, it is the highest point of a wave. Next is trough. It is the lowest point of a wave. In the given illustration on the right, point W and Y are the crest, while X and Z are the troughs. Amplitude are denoted as capital letter A. Amplitude is the distance between a crest or a trough at the midline of the wave or dashed line, or one half the vertical distance from a crest to the nearest trough. Amplitude is related to the intensity of a wave or radiant power per unit area. The intensity is square of the amplitude. Wavelength. Wavelength is a distance between two successive crests or two consecutive troughs. Thus, the unit for wavelength is any unit for length such as meter, millimeter, micrometer, nanometer, angstrom, and so on. Next is frequency. Frequency is number of wave cycle propagating per second or number of crests or number of troughs passing through a certain point per second. The unit for frequency is cycle per second or second raised to negative 1 for hertz. Frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. These characteristics are related to the one another according to the equation. Frequency is equal to C divided by the wavelength. The proportionality constant C is the speed of light in a vacuum. It is equal to 299 million 792,458 meters per second. Given the illustration on the right, we can see that a wave with greater frequency has a shorter wavelength. Next is period or capital letter T. Period is the time it takes for one cycle of a wave to pass through a point. In simple words, it is a reciprocal of a frequency. Thus, the unit for period is the unit of time such as second. Wave number, or denoted by V tilde, is the number of cycle per unit distance. It is the reciprocal of wavelength. The unit for wave number is cycle per unit length. Usually, it is reciprocal meter or reciprocal centimeter. We have here example 1. A certain radio station transmits signal with a frequency of 615 kHz. Determine the wavelength corresponding to the frequency. For the solution, we can use the equation frequency is equal to C divided by the wavelength. Rearranging the equation yields to wavelength is equal to C divided by the frequency. Plug in the speed of light and the given frequency. Since the given frequency is in kilohertz, we need to convert it to per second using the conversion. 1 kilohertz is equal to 10 raised to 3 hertz. Also, 1 hertz is equal to 1 per second. These conversions are necessary for us to arrive at the right unit for wavelength meter. Simplify the equation, we have 488 meters. Different type of electromagnetic radiation differ in a wavelength, and of course, frequency. The electromagnetic spectrum shows the type of EMR at each for a certain magnitude of wavelength. The waves transmitted into radius are radio waves, having the ones with longest wavelength. The next longest wavelength are the microwaves, followed by the infrared or IR in cellular phone and remote controls. The visible light, which is a type of EMR that is visible to our sense of sight, ultraviolet or UV rays that are emitted by sunlight and some UV lamp. X-rays, which are um, widely used in medicine and gamma rays which is 
emitted from various nuclear reaction, those with shortest wavelength have the greatest energy. Thus, by the most destructive type of EMR if not properly used. As waves, EMR possesses wave behaviors. An example is interference. Interference occurs when waves combine, and interference can be constructive or destructive. A constructive interference results when two waves combine in phase, which is manifested by increase in the magnitude of the wave amplitude. A destructive interference occurs when two waves combine out of phase, resulting in lower or cancellation of wave amplitude. Next is diffraction. Diffraction is the bending of waves when they pass through a slit or aperture. Another behavior is reflection. Reflection is the process of bouncing back of a beam of light waves after they strike a surface. This can be illustrated by pointing the laser pointer to a lustrous material such as metallic band. Next is the refraction. Refraction is the bending of waves when they pass from one medium to another medium. An example is the bending of the light when it is emitted from air going to water. Absorption. Absorption is the transfer of energy of wave into matter. This is manifested by a lowering of intensity after the wave passes through an object. An example illustrating absorption is when the light from a flashlight is blocked by paper. In this case, it is the paper that absorbs the light. Scattering. Scattering occurs when light is absorbed by matter and it is re-emitted in different directions. This phenomenon can be observed in the daytime light. This light is caused by the gases in the atmosphere that scatter the light coming from the sun. Deeper studies about the nature of light lead to discoveries that not everything can be explained by classical physics. Classical physics claims that the intensity of light emitted by a heated body called a black body radiation increases towards infinity as temperature is increased. This suggests that even at a lower temperature, objects may emit light of lower wavelength, example, X-ray and gamma rays. However, this phenomenon is not observed experimentally. This limitation of the classical model at lower wavelength is called the ultraviolet catastrophe. In 90s, Max Planck came up with a theory adhering to the phenomenon of ultraviolet catastrophe. Since there is a maximum intensity of a radiation emitted at each temperature, he proposed that the energy that an atom or molecule can absorb or emit are multiples of an energy value which he referred to as a quantum. Plural of it is the quanta. In the Planck's quantum theory, the energy associated with a quantum can be represented mathematically as E is equals to HV, where E is the energy V is the frequency, and H is the Planck's constant, which is equal to 6.636 times 10 raised to the power of negative 34 joules second. Cohering to the theory, the permissible value of energy or integral multiple of HV or NHV, where N is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Since frequency is equal to C divided by wavelength, the previous can also be expressed as E is equal to HC divided by the wavelength, where E is the energy, H is the Planck's constant, C is the speed of a light in vacuum, which is equal to 3.0 times 10 raised to the power of 8 meter per second, then wavelength. We have here example of Planck's quantum theory. Um, you can post the video if you would like to try to answer. A certain radio station transmits signal with a, with a frequency of 615 kHz. Determine the energy of this radio wave. For the solution, we will use the Planck's equation, which is E is equal to HV. Substitute the Planck's constant and the given frequency. We need to incorporate the conversion factor to convert the unit of frequency from kilohertz to hertz. Note that the unit hertz is the same as per second. Simplifying, we got 4.08 times 10 raised to the power of negative 28 joules. 
The concept of energy quantization can be compared to the rate of telephone calls. Consider that each minute of a certain call costs 7.50 pesos. Once a minute of call has elapsed, another 7.50 pesos is charged, and this continues until the call ends. Thus, the possible costs that one can be charged are 7.50 pesos, 15 pesos, 22.50 pesos, and so on. There is no way that a call would cost 4.75 pesos, 8.25 pesos, and 10 pesos. Another breakthrough in science is the discovery of the phenomenon called the photoelectric effect, which was observed by Heinrich Hertz in 1888. In the photoelectric effect, electrons can be ejected from a metal surface if light is irrigated on it, provided that the light has a frequency that exceeds the threshold frequency that is characteristic to the metal. Given that the irrigated light can be displaced electrons from the metal, the number of ejected electrons depends on the light intensity, and the kinetic energy possesses when ejected electrons are dependent on the frequency of the irrigated light. However, the interaction of light with matter is something that is beyond the scope of classical physics. Albert Einstein introduced in 1905 that light consists of quanta or particles called photons, with each of which possessing energy equals to Hv based on the Planck's equation. Removal of electrons are possible as irrigated light overcomes the work function or the energy associated with the bending of electrons in a metal surface. The excess energy from the light is absorbed by the ejected electron or photoelectron in the form of kinetic energy. Thus, the energy of the irrigated photon is equal to kinetic energy plus work function or kinetic energy is equal to energy of irrigated photon minus work function. The kinetic energy of an electron is equal to one half mass of electron times speed of electron squared. The energy of the irrigated light is equal to h times frequency or h times t divided by the wavelength. The work function is equal to h times threshold frequency. We have here an example. UV rays with a Wavelength of 100 nanometer were used to shine on the surface of titanium metal. Given that the threshold frequency of titanium is 1.04 times 10 raised to the power of 15 hertz. Number 1. Calculate the A. Energy of the irrigated UV rays, B. Work function of titanium, C. Kinetic energy of the ejected electron, D. Speed of the ejected electron with a mass of 9.11 times 10 raised to the power of negative 31 kilogram. Number 2. Determine if an electron can be ejected using the yellow light with a wavelength of 570 nanometer. To calculate the energy of the irrigated UV rays, we will use the equation energy of irrigated photon, which is equal to Hc divided by the wavelength. Substitute given the values, then convert the units of wavelength to meter. The useful conversion factor is 1 meter is equal to 10 raised to 9 nanometers. Simplifying, we get a value of energy of a rigid photon is equal to 1.99 times 10 raised to negative 18 joules. To calculate the work function of titanium, we will use work function is equal to H times threshold frequency, substituting the value of the Planck's constant and the given threshold frequency. We obtain work function is equal to 6.90 times 10 raised to the power of negative 19 joules. Since the energy of the UV rays is greater than the work function, electrons can be ejected from titanium. To calculate the kinetic energy of the ejected electron, we will use the kinetic energy is equal to energy of the irrigated photon minus work function. Substituting the values, 
vacuum chain kinetic energy is equal to 1.30 times 10 raised to the power of negative 18 joules. We can calculate the speed of the ejected electron from the calculated kinetic energy using the equation. Kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. Rearranging the equation, v is equal to the square root of 2 kinetic energy divided by the mass. We can substitute the given kinetic energy and the mass of electron to the equation. Note that 1 joule is equal to 1 kilogram meters squared per second squared. Cancelling units that can be cancelled, we are left with meters squared per second squared. Taking the square root, we get um, v is equal to 1.69 times 10 raised to 6 meters per second. For number 2, we need to calculate the energy of the given yellow light using the equation energy of the rejected photon is equal to hc divided by the wavelength. Substituting the given values and converting the unit of the given wavelength from nanometer to meter, we get energy of the rejected photon is equal to 3.49 times 10 raised to the power of negative 19 joules. Since work function is equal to 6.90 times 10 raised to the power of negative 19 joules, energy of irrigated photon is less than the work function. Thus, the energy of yellow light is not enough to eject an electron from the titanium metal. From our discussion, we see that light has dual properties. Light behaves both as a wave and a particle. Light as a wave consists of oscillating electric and magnetic waves. As a particle, light made up of particles called photons. In summary, we learned that light possesses both wave and particulate properties. Here is the references and bibliography, and that will be all. Thank you for listening.